Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friends, welcome back to the show. It's hard to believe that this is actually episode number 26 of Now That's Something Good. It's so crazy. We can't believe we've gotten to share so many stories with you all. Thank you so much for being on this journey with us and listening along. We are so grateful. So this month, we are taking time to chat all about relationships. We've asked some couples to come share with us about their relationship and what they've learned along the way. Whether you're married, happily single, dating, waiting, or engaged, we think these conversations will encourage you. Today, we chat with our friends, Brandon and Phoenix Johnson. They've been married for about a year and a half. We chat about singleness, dating, long distance relationships, and a whole lot more. You might recognize Brandon from early in our podcast history. He was back on episode number three. Make sure to go give that episode a listen if you haven't yet. So here we go. Here's my conversation with Brandon and Phoenix. Hey friends, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I am here with Brandon and Phoenix Johnson. You guys want to say hello? Hey guys. What's up everyone? (laughs) Hey, so this is a first in podcast. Now that's something good podcast history. Brandon, you're actually our first second time guest. I am so honored by that. (laughs) I Uh, guess you did well enough the first time that we decided to bring you back. Jeez, thanks for having (laughs) me. I'm excited to be here. Wow, that that puts me on a whole new level. I'm, I mean, no, nobody's up there with me right nobody's now. Nobody's up there with you. No I pressure. Feel honored to be married to you right now. <laughs> yeah, Phoenix. How does it feel to get me married? <laughs> Can I have to your you? autograph? <laughs> you are a very blessed woman. So, <laughs> and I'm very blessed. I love it. Phoenix and Brandon are a lot of fun. We have the privilege. I work on staff with Brandon. Phoenix is well versed in the good family. I feel like I shouldn't say like all that you've done, but she has worked very closely with the smallest good children, (laughs) all of the good children. Um, She's nannied for us. And the fact that she's still our friend after watching our four kids and spending a lot of time in our house just shows the kind of person she is. But Phoenix, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you just introduce who you are a little bit. Tell us how long you've been married and tell us what fills your days. Yeah, um, I'm Phoenix. I moved here about a year and a half from California to marry Brandon. So he always makes the joke that that's how he knows that I loved him because I moved. Um, But yeah, I am involved in youth ministry with Brandon and we do that together. So that involves a lot of my time, but then also a substitute teacher, um, get to get to know more youth and focus on middle and high school for that. So I get to nanny your wonderful kids in the summers. And uh, yeah, then we have a a daughter that's a, a dog. Maybe a future, future kids that aren't hairy. So future yes. kids that aren't hairy. Right now, Aspen, you guys say she's your daughter, or at least Brandon does. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, she's a golden retriever. Daughter. And you've had. Um, what would you call if she's your daughter? I guess you've had grandchildren already, grand puppies. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We had ten grand puppies. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's quite the story in of itself. Maybe we'll get there. Brandon, tell us a little more about you. Reintroduce yourself to the folks if they haven't listened. Tell awesome. Us- so yeah, um, back in October of 2017, I moved to St. Louis to um, be the youth pastor at Two Rivers Church and. Um, Sarah, you were part-time worship leader and now you worked your all, all the way up to be everybody's boss, including me. And I can vouch for Sarah, if you're listening audience, she's an amazing boss, an amazing person. So I'm not just sucking up to you. Well, I really, thank really you. think that. I didn't that. pay him and, to say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, still, uh, still the youth pastor at Two Rivers yeah. and, um, I was a single dude being a youth pastor, which yeah. I made you, I know that made you nervous at first. Like, who's this single guy going to be my daughter's youth pastor? And, uh, but now I'm married and Phoenix brings a whole lot to the table when it comes yes, to, she does. um, youth ministry. So that's awesome. Well, I'm really excited. We've been talking all about relationships for the last few weeks on the podcast of all really marriage relationships, but there's so much that you can learn no matter what your relationship status might be right now in life. And so Brandon Phoenix, we're going to jump in. We're going to go all over the place with you guys, but I want to start with your guys' relationship. Just tell us like how you met because you've got quite the story a little bit here. So (laughs) Phoenix, I'm going to have you, why don't you start from your side of the story? How did you meet Brandon? Start walking us through how Brandon and Phoenix became Brandon and Phoenix. Yes, it is a true love story. (laughs) There should be a movie about it, but, um, (laughs) So I know Brandon, he actually dated one of my friends, and that's the fun part of the story. <laughs> I love this so much. But there's very much God in the whole process. And so um, from my side, we when he started dating my friend, I was that friend that 
um, interviewed him to make sure he was good enough. And <laughs> not many guys passed my test, but he did pass it. And uh, to the point where he even liked her more because he's like, oh, these are the friends you surround yourself with. So he thought I was legit. So he set me up with one of his best friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's really romantic. And then... Um, we ended up doing a camping trip in Zion National Park, and we all met up, and including him, um, Felicia, my friend, or me, and then his friend as well. So I, I was, it was very interesting, but I really quickly learned as great as his friend was that he wasn't for me. And, okay. Um, but I remember on that trip, and God brought this to memory later, that... Um, I had this thought, I want to marry a guy like Brandon someday. It gave me hope because at that point, it was hard to see a guy that was fully after God um, and also liked adventure, also was intentional, humble, all those things. And so um, I saw that Brandon was like that. And so I was very much like, God, this gives me hope that you can do something like this for me too. So fast forward, um, a year and a half after they broke up, he started sliding into my DMs. All you young people out there know what that sliding means. In, like <laughs> That's it. a direct message for you older folk. Um, <laughs> and so he, he showed some interest, and I just was never considered an option because I would never do that to a friend. Um, and so <laughs> um, I told this him to— This is so good. <laughs> I actually told him to never talk to me again and told him all the reasons we wouldn't work out. Wait, you told him not to talk to you again? Yes. Through because, DMs? Yes. Wow. Because I didn't. I wanted to honor my friend. Okay, wait, hold on. A no, second. she's like. So, you're trying to fill a void in your heart. Don't ever talk to me again. You need to keep God number one. I'm like, I've been single for a year and a half. <laughs> I, Jesus is number one in my life. The Bible just says, find you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. I just. Thought you were totally looking Phoenix for was, a wife, is what was yeah, going on. Yeah, I thought Phoenix was awesome, and so. Um, I was just checking in on her to make sure she was still serving the Lord. And, and <laughs> so I got to ask you, I mean, so like when you were sliding into Phoenix's DMs, was it purely like a friend thing or were you re- like, what was going on here? <laughs> no, I, I was always not always interested in her. Not when I, not when I was dating her friend, <laughs> Okay, hopefully, um, hopefully but not. I <laughs> knew from the beginning Phoenix was legit. Um, just because when she was interviewing me, when I was dating her friend, I was like, man, she's asking some good questions. And I, yeah. I knew like she had a, uh, a, a strong relationship with the Lord. So I immediately tried to set her up with my friend, Andrew. <laughs> so I wasn't thinking about Phoenix in that way. Um, but then, you know, you fast forward a year and a half and I had been single and um, Phoenix was single and we followed each other on Facebook and yeah. Instagram. And so, yeah, I definitely had interest. It wasn't just, I want to be friends with a girl that lives in California because I don't have any friends. Thank you for being honest, Brandon. I mean, let's be most guys are probably not looking to just be friends when they're sliding into your DMs. So that's, I, that's, that's why I uh, asked those questions and told him to uh, never talk to me again. So at that point, he, he we stopped talking. He still kind of liked all my things on Facebook. Um, you were stalking then, her at that point, I guess. And I kept no, I, kept I wasn't. View. I wasn't. I have to tell this part of the story. I wasn't stalking. I, I asked her like if we could FaceTime date and then she shut me down and then a while. The second time. Yeah. And second she time. Shut You're me sliding down into my DMs. The second time. And then I waited a little bit. I still wasn't going to give up, but I waited a little bit, not to try to be manipulative, but I just wasn't messaging or sliding into her DMs as much. And then all yeah. of a sudden out of nowhere, <laughs> I get this text and it's Phoenix and she's asking me how to make these foil pack like uh, <laughs> meals for camping. Okay, okay. And I'm like, okay, she's got at least a little bit of interest or else she, she wouldn't be texting me randomly. It. So Phoenix, so I remember were you? I was at the grocery store and I got the text and when I saw it and I, I just smiled and I was like, I know she's just reaching out because I haven't messaged her. In a There's while. your end, right? <laughs> Is that true, Phoenix? Were you re- did you really need to know how to make the um, foil packets, or were do you? Do I have to answer? No, I'm temperature just checking. To you know, see where- I, I I knew I wanted to make them. I remember he's the one that taught me how. And so there was that moment in the grocery store where I had the text, and I was kept looking at my phone. I'm like, should I do this? I was literally like pacing, and I'm like. <laughs> It's not bad. I mean, I'm not interested or anything. So I was like, I'm not interested. I don't know. I don't know. And then I ended up sending it. So he oh, figured wow. it out. <laughs> okay. So you got the text. What happened? What happened next? So yeah. So a second time, it was like a year and a half after that time. Um, that Wait, he, it was a year and a half between after, the grocery store foil packet text? Well, and- I don't know about the grocery store, but at least when he started sliding into my DMs the first time. Okay. The second time he was doing that and I just... 
I had learned in my dating career, I guess, yes. if you would say, <laughs> that I just was over games at that point. I didn't yeah. want to just guess what a guy was thinking. I was yeah. like, God is a God of clarity. So I just wanted some clarity in why he was messaging me. So yeah. I asked, straight up asked him, why are you messaging me? Is it because you're interested or are you just lonely? <laughs> and so he said, interested. And I'm like, okay, then you're either ready to pursue me or just lead me on. And so that was the most straightforward I had ever been. And so um, he was just so persistent. And so I still, in my mind, was like, absolutely not. I still, my friend yeah. was married at this point, but I still felt um, like it would betray her trust to okay. have dated him. And so um, come to find out, he told me um, that she had actually reached out to him randomly about a hike and had put it out there that we'd be perfect for each other. And so at that point when he told me that, that's when I was like, it changed everything for me. And yeah. so um, we just decided to both pray and fast to see if this was what you know God had. And I was very much committed to what I was doing in California. And um, so I just knew if, if I was going to do long distance, if that was going to yeah. even be an option, I had to know that God was covering it would give me peace about it. And he very much, when I prayed, I uh, like felt so much peace. I feel like God brought to mind his character that I had already seen and then also brought to mind character that I hadn't seen yet. And so very much felt peace. I asked a lot of people also in my world, uh, yeah. mentors, friends, like their advice and to be prayerful with me. And it led to us FaceTime dating one time and then from FaceTime there. FaceTime dating. I love this. I love the virtual. So you were in California, Phoenix, and yes. Brandon, you're here. Yep. So catch us up a little bit on when you're having these conversations, what are you thinking? What were you thinking about this whole long distance thing? Yeah. So I wouldn't recommend striking up a long distance relationship <laughs> with just anyone. I think it helped me see it as an option since I knew her character. We kind of hung out with in groups of people. Yeah. And, and so I knew Phoenix. Um, already. So that, that helped me. Um, I wasn't excited about long distance, but I thought that highly of Phoenix, like, uh, if this works out, she's definitely yeah. worth, worth it. And, and, um, and so I forget your original question. <laughs> I said, tell me the long distance thing. Like, were you, what, did you? Yeah. So, so yeah, we both prayed about it. Obviously, um, Phoenix prayed, I would say prayed a lot more than me as far as on my end, of course, I, I wanted to date the right type of girl, yeah. and I knew Phoenix was the type of girl I wanted to date. And so I was praying that God would guide my steps, and I felt like He had given me this desire. And so I yeah. wasn't going to pray hours upon hours if I should FaceTime date. I kind of just thought that the Lord would guide me as I went. you know. Yeah. And so my yeah. first step was to get her to, to do a FaceTime date, and then there would be clarity after yeah. that on if we wanted to do another FaceTime date or yeah. or whatnot. And so we did the FaceTime date. Um, Wait, I and- just got to say, I love that there are FaceTime dates because like when Will and I were dating, FaceTime wasn't even a thing. And so I feel like for some people listening, they're like, what? And yeah. then others of you are like, oh yeah, that's like a totally normal thing. This happens all the time. Okay, keep going. So we did the FaceTime date and it went really well. And I, I forget, I think we probably talked on the phone again and then set up another FaceTime date. And yeah. after a few phone dates and FaceTime dates, I'm like, okay, I really like this girl, but I need to see her in person, not yeah. see her, but hang out in person and just see how it is in person. So I actually, um, during the work day, I'm sorry, during work hours, I actually got on <laughs> southwest.com and I got, a, I've never That's seen it. this cheap of ticket from St. Louis to LA, but I literally got a round trip ticket for $120. Wow. Um, left Thursday after work and came back Saturday night before church. And so it was literally a two day trip. So Phoenix picked me up Thursday evening. Um, I stayed with her grandparents and we had two days of awesome dates, went to in and out burger. We walked the beach. Um, we ended up praying for a guy. I, I just remember that first day it was, it was awesome. Cause we connected on so many levels, yeah. um, physical attraction. We had good conversation. We were, um, doing ministry together already and like naturally didn't even have to force it. And it just felt really good to, to connect on spiritual levels and, and every level. And so then, so that was like really reassuring to me because we connected on the phone, on FaceTime now in person. And so then cool. we just kept, yeah, kept FaceTime, kept talking and I wasn't really big into texting. Um, okay. And I actually, if it, 
any single people are listening, I would recommend <laughs> this is a good note. not yeah, good like to know. <laughs> getting to know each other through texting because okay. then it's like a constant all day thing, which I know is exciting at first, but it's really not a good way to get to know somebody because, because then if they don't text you, it's like, Oh, are they not interested anymore? Yeah. Or, you know, you have to text them in the morning, text them at night. And, yep. and then you just can't really focus on your job or your other um, passions because it's like you're just nonstop texting. Yeah, so that's a good point. And I, I told that to Phoenix as far as like I don't think it's the best way for us to get to know each other. I don't think she was the happiest about that at first <laughs> because she not just, at first or at last. <laughs> but it's good. So we, I'm like, you know, do you still not text Phoenix a lot? <laughs> we we don't really have conversations texting. No. Still, I still think it's kind of it was a good just hard rule. during that's dating good. when you're long distance and and you get busy to where you can't talk on the phone. Yeah. And so for me, that was our only connecting point. Like if you we were in the same place. I wouldn't want to text, but we, since we were long distance, that felt like the, one of the only forms of communication we had. Yeah. And so that was why it was hard. But I think in general, I've learned about guys versus girls. Guys aren't texters. They're not phone talkers yeah. typically, and girls are. And so that's something that you learn in, in relationship for girls to know yeah. that, hey, don't take that personally. Don't take that as a sign. Most guys are a lot like that. And I even asked my pastors at that time, I'm like, is this, does this mean he doesn't like me? They're like, no, <laughs> that means they don't, he doesn't want to text and no guy wants to text. So, yeah. Okay. Yes. So I feel like I got paused you for just a minute. Cause you brought up something great Phoenix. Cause so often when you're in this dating stage or even like the pre dating stage, you're like, does he like me? Does she like me? Like all this stuff back and forth. Now, granted, I've been a long way removed from this. So you would know <laughs> way more about this than I do, but how did you Phoenix? Cause what you just said, like you asked some friends, like how did you stay secure in who you needed to be without being that girl? That's like, Oh my gosh, he didn't text me there. He didn't call me or Brandon. I don't know how it is for guys. I don't know if y'all think the same thing or if there would be the equivalent of like, she didn't respond fast enough or she didn't call me or she said something that you were like, I don't know. Or if guys are a little more like, no, it's cool. She talked to me this week. We're fine. <laughs> but talk about this just for a minute for people listening, because that is hard, right? To fall into this kind of, I don't want to say manipulative, but it's almost manipulative kind of back and forth. And you guys were long distance yeah. and didn't get to like see each other in person all the time. So how did you, Phoenix, when I'll start with you, just how did you stay kind of secure and go in? Okay. Like I know Brandon likes me. We're in this or, or was that a struggle? Um, I think in general for dating, there's so many games. There's so many games. And from the get go, we decided we're not going to play those games. If you yeah. want to text me, Text me. If I want to text you. I'm going to text you. There's these weird unknown like <laughs> games that you play in dating. Like yeah. don't text right away or it'll seem you're like you're too eager and all this stuff. And yeah. it's just so confusing. And again, God is a God of clarity. So I think just talking like, hey, what are you feeling right now? Just yeah. having those discussions. Where are we at? I think in a healthy relationship, you're kind of doing some checkpoints of where, where are you at in this relationship and uh, where do you stand? And just t- having that communication, I think is key versus just wondering. Yeah. Um, there's so much insecurity that can come just from that. Um, but then also, I mean, one of the biggest things that I would say, even getting ready to date, um, and being ready for that is knowing your identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. That was huge and a game changer in this dating relationship with him versus ones I had in the past where I didn't know that. Um, so that is number one. And I've seen that play such a big part in our marriage, Yeah. but then also, um, I, it's so good, especially I think, again, more for girls, yeah. is to uh, process things with people. Um, so I had a good friend that was also going through a long distance <laughs> relationship. Okay. And so a lot of times I'm like, hey, I'm thinking this. Am I crazy? What have you done? What have you learned? A lot of times I was able to, she was able to tell me, hey, I've already been through this. This yeah. is what hap- what's yeah. happening. And then I would lean into um, my pastors at that time. They're like, father figures in my life, brothers, and, and ask them like, Hey, this is happening. Like from a guy's perspective, what do you think? So it would yeah. really lean into people from different ages and walks of life, married, unmarried mm-hmm. mentors versus friends and, and tr- really try to bring people in, which I think is also key in, yeah. in dating as well. Um, and helping you just not be too much in your head in a dating relationship. I think yeah. long distance made it harder to, you know, have any kind of security. But in general, our security doesn't come from relationship with another person. It comes from our relationship with God. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a combination of all those things really, really helped. 
Hey friends, just interrupting this conversation. We want you to join us for something good Friday. Let's start the weekend strong by filling everyone's feed with all kinds of good things. To join us, just create a story or a post on your social pages sharing something good. It can be anything. Just make sure to tag now that's something good so we can see it and we can share too. And you never know when we will pick one of you to send a little something good to. So make sure to join us for Something Good Fridays on Instagram and Facebook. Now back to our conversation. I think that's great, Phoenix. Like you said, that our your identity's got to come in Christ first in, in any shape or form, right? Because so often when we enter into any d- dating relationship or whatever, we're, we're looking to fill something in ourselves. Sometimes it's missing mm-hmm. and that other person is never going to fully fill that. And the right. cool thing is God created us to be together, to mm-hmm. have a partner in life. And there's something cool about that when we find that person and he didn't create everybody for that. Let me clarify. Like yeah. some people I think are called to singleness and it's a different thing. But when you do feel like, hey, I'm called to share my life with somebody, there is a completeness that happens in that, which is God's design. But it can be hard because we still look for that person to like complete who you are. And it's like, hey, you're complete in Christ. Brandon, talk to us about guys. Like, did you struggle with when it's long distance, like feeling like if you really knew where you're at with Phoenix or was that, how did, how does that work in a male brain, head, heart? (laughs) Right. Yeah. Um, man, I knew she was such a direct person, obviously, because she shut me down so many times <laughs> and told me how she felt, which I kind of appreciated it. And, you know, yeah. I thought, man, this girl is legit. And so I took it as a compliment and just like, she's not just going to fall for any guy that shows her attention. So yeah. I thought that was, that was something, um, very admirable. Um, we know we were older and more mature, I would say, which was helpful. I was 31 Phoenix was 28 or something like that. And so we kind of were over the dating just to date. Like we weren't dating just to have somebody, you know, we really wanted to find uh, the person that God had for us to marry. Yeah. Um, you know, I was like Abraham's age almost. And so I'm like, I gotta, (laughs) I gotta find, lock this in here. I gotta find a wife and not in a desperate way, but just like, we didn't want to waste time, you know, cause you waste time and with somebody you don't see yourself marrying, you're just Lim- like limiting yourself or maybe meeting the right type of person yeah. and just wasting time in life. And so we were both dating with the intention of finding out if this person was the one mm-hmm. that we wanted to marry. Um, and so we didn't play a lot of games, which I'm very thankful for. Like we, I will be completely transparent. There were past relationships where I just wanted to see if I could get the girl to really like me. Mm. I thought I liked her, but then once she liked me a lot, then I was like, do I really even like her that much? Which I'm sorry. I've asked the Lord to forgive me for that. (laughs) And I've asked the past girls to forgive me for that. And I realized, okay, they really like me now, but I'm not that into this relationship anymore. And so this time I learned from that, thank God. And so I told myself, do I really want to call Phoenix? And I didn't do it just to do it like, okay, I've got to call her. I need to try to uh, like woo her. Yeah. And, um, so I really tried to be led with my mind and my heart and my emotions. Um, so I'm proud of that. I'm not, I wasn't perfect in our dating relationship, but that's one thing I was happy about. Didn't play the games, didn't try to win her heart before I knew I wanted it. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, that's, that's great, Brandon. So I don't know if you guys would use this phrase, but I would kind of say that you, you, you use the word intentional, but just kind of that intentional dating. That is not something that a lot of people do or know about or discuss. Phoenix, could you just share with us a little more like on what you mean? Like when we would say, Hey, you were kind of intentionally dating or you're not playing games. Just talk a little more about that, especially to those listening that are maybe whether they're teenagers, whether they're in their twenties, whether they're 40 or 50, still you know, waiting, hoping that maybe they will find a life partner. What does it look like to be more intentional about dating than just, hey, I'm just dating whoever, whenever, all this stuff? I think for me, I learned, um, because I was boy crazy initially, like middle school, high school, yeah, so much so that I decided to not date my first year of college. Okay. And I realized very much that there's insecurity and things that needed to be worked out in me prior. And that's why I mentioned the identity in Christ. And so I pretty much didn't date all through college. And I just kept realizing like I wasn't ready. You're never officially ready, but I just felt like 
I knew in my heart that I was supposed to just focus on God at that time. And when the right person came, that, that God would bring him, not me searching. Because for the longest time, I felt like I was the one pursuing, I guess, in a sense. Um, and so I think waiting and becoming that person was key to that. But also um, at that point, then I can actually feel like I'm now going to be able to date to marry. Yeah. <laughs> because we, so I, someone told me this one time and it really has stuck with me and stuck with me then was I kept wanting to find the one, you know, but mm. becoming the one was like good. what I needed to do. Yeah. And being the person that I'm even looking for, um, that's like got a firm foundation with Christ and um, knows who they are in Him and all those things. And so yeah. um, at that point, once I felt like I had gotten more uh, grounded, that's when I felt like I could even date to marry. Um, it wouldn't be just like me trying to take from somebody else. Yeah. It was actually me able to give and to um, follow what God was leading. So I think that was key is to be that person. I think when you're younger, I mean, it totally works for a lot of people, but sometimes when you're younger, you're trying to figure out who you are. Mm -hmm. And while you're dating, if you're doing that, you're really just trying to you're finding identity in that person. Mm -hmm. It's hard mm -hmm. to not do that. And there's a lot of insecurity that goes into to that, which honestly just causes a lot of pain and hurt. Yeah. And so um, to intentionally date, it was just, okay, I'm going to have this relationship with God first, and then I'm going to date to marry. And um, I think along with that, it's it's just a process. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, being, for me, it was being very prayerful in the process. I think what I see a lot of times now with those that date is, especially when they're doing online dating, is people treat one another so different than they would treat another fellow brother or sister in Christ. You know, you get the, the ghosting where you don't show up at dates, you just stop responding, all those things. And it's, and it's so not how we're supposed to treat another yeah. person in yeah. Christ. And so I think getting to the point where you can treat them and honor that person. Um, and yeah, I guess just intentionality of being prayerful in that process and um, really being led by the the spirit, not just dating everyone. I think that was a big thing for me yeah. is I learned to to be friends first with people when I okay. when I could. And a lot of times, um, either by being friends, I realized that person wasn't who I was supposed to be with. Um, yeah. A lot of times I was like, told the guy if they wanted to go on a date, they had to go to church with me first. And, <laughs> you know, so it worked for some. I feel like y'all need to try that. Phoenix, that's a great but tip. Then it made no a lot wonder of people... you didn't date in college. <laughs> 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 a lot of guys would run, but then a lot, then some would stay. And I just, you learn so much about a person, even in yeah. friendship yeah. before you start getting romantic and letting, giving your heart out to another person. So that was part of the intentionality for me. Yeah. Phoenix, I love that. Sorry I made fun of you. <laughs> Sorry I made fun of you. Hey, it's worked to your favor. I love that because I think there is something to being friends and you seeing people who they really are. Because like I said, when you just jump into dating, sometimes you don't know because we can be whoever we want to be mm -hmm. for a couple hours or yeah. whenever, and that's easily manipulated. And if you know a little more what you mm -hmm. want and what you're looking for, um, then it's easier to weed out the ones that's like, and, and really just not waste your time or their time trying yeah. to find somebody that you're like, yeah, that's not really good. Gonna right. work for me. But Brandon, do you have anything to add yeah, about? Yeah, absolutely. So we dated long distance, which had its negatives and positives. Yeah. One of the positives was we had to talk. You know, when you're in person, you can start cuddling. You go to a movie, you don't have to talk. You know, yeah. you just start making out. And yeah. whenever you start kissing, you stop talking. Yeah. And so we had to look at each other on the screen for <laughs> That's hours. That's true, yeah, for <laughs> And hours. time would go by quick because we would talk about everything, Yeah, you know, all kinds of stuff. And so that was, that was definitely a positive, and that helped us build a firm foundation because dating, in my mind, is trying to get to know the person on a deeper level mm -hmm. to see if that's the person you want to marry. Yeah. And um, I think it's an art. Dating is an art. And one thing I've learned from past mistakes was um, – Dating really needs to be taken slow um, and just get to know the other person, get to yeah. know how they are around their family, hang yeah. out with their friends. Like group dates is are, are awesome because yeah. when you're just one-on-one -on -one with a person, you just get to know them one-on-one. -on -one. But when you get to know them around their friends, hmm. their family, how they are at work, all, like getting to know them in different um, arenas is so, yeah. so um, important. and. Sometimes in dating, I would try to figure everything out so quick. Like I would try to analyze 
and say, um, you know, I don't know about this part of our relationship or I have red flags on this area of Phoenix or whoever I was dating and I would just analyze it and analyze it and analyze it. And sometimes it stole the, um, the joy of just dating and building yeah. a friendship yeah. and getting to know them. I had to try to figure it out so quick. And so I would encourage anybody that's listening, that's in a dating relationship or going to date, just take it slow and relax and just don't make any mm. commitments before dating a year. Like I would say, date a whole year. Yeah. See how it is at Christmas. See how it is during your birthday. See how it is during the summer. Yeah. Um, hang out with their family. And since you know you're going to date them a whole year without making any big decisions, it kind of takes the pressure off. Like the guy, dudes listening, you don't have to wonder if you're going to propose, you know, anytime soon. Like just relax and build a friendship and talk as much as you can. Like whatever you think your goals are physically, like whether kissing is good or making out is something you guys want to do. I would just say the longer you push that off, the better, because the more you can just talk and get to know each other yeah. um, on those deeper levels. Because um, when you start when you start the physical stuff, it yeah. connects you on levels that you feel connected to that person but then once the newness of the physical stuff wears off, you don't have that connection that you could have built by talking and getting yeah. to know them yeah. intimately uh, through conversation and experiences. And so um, that's one thing Phoenix and I did really well. Is, and she, <laughs> I, I'll tell a funny story. So when I would go out there, or she would come here, we would try to d- see each other every month. Yeah. Um, her job was flexible. Two Rivers was very flexible with me with even making short trips to see her. So we tried to see each other every four or five weeks and I wouldn't hold her hand. And she was like, (laughs) I could tell she was getting upset and holding hands. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Right. But I had held girls hands and kissed them before I even knew that I liked them that much. Yeah. I have the Lord has forgiven me of that stuff. How I I, uh, handled myself in the past, but I did not want to uh, try to win her heart before I knew it, or I didn't want to try to feel connected to her through holding hands if I wasn't connected spiritually or through conversation. So when we did hold hands, finally, (laughs) I I grabbed her hand and and we held it and she's like, finally. (laughs) And then the same thing happened when we finally kissed. Um, She's like, oh, finally. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) And uh, it was funny, but it was actually... I took it as a compliment because I was proud of myself that we both like said, we just want to get to know each other on other levels. Yeah. Um, We want to trust each other. We want to know each other. We want to rely on each other before we start touching. Yeah. uh, Because physical stuff just clouds your judgment on if you truly know that person. Yeah. Um, But it's so, so hard when you are connecting and excited and, and, Um, it's just so, so hard not to do that, but I encourage all of our listeners push off the physical stuff as long as you can and get to know them because if they're the one for you, you'll have plenty of time to, to kiss and hold hands and cuddle. Yeah. Amen. Just I fist think, bump until then. That's all we were doing in the beginning. We just fist no, bump. No, I think that's great because, and I think people, I appreciate you guys talking about that because I think that's something that doesn't get talked about enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes there's just social or cultural pressure that like, hey, everybody is doing this. I'm sure your guys' line of work, you're with teenagers. And I'm sure you see that all the time and probably hear stories that would make a lot of parents <laughs> Um probably stick to their stomachs, just knowing that kids are feeling pressured for whatever reasons, um, sometimes in really bad situations, sometimes just it is what it is, um, to do things that maybe they're not ready to do yet. I think the same thing can be true even as an adult, as you grow, um, and just being wise and having wisdom as you're walking into to every relationship. Um, so give me just a couple real quick, I'm going to ask you if each of you, Phoenix, I'm going to start with you. What would be a long distance relationship tip that you would give? You guys have shared several, but if you could talk to somebody who's like either maybe thinking about like, Hey, this might be a long distance relationship, or maybe they're in one now, or just give the people some help. What's a long distance relationship tip? Oh, if I only knew. No, I'm just kidding. If I only knew. <laughs> um, I would say, um, honestly, probably just the clarity part. Just yeah. talk because it, it can feel like, man, we're not connecting as much. Or, I mean, at one point, we even 
felt like we weren't compatible because we didn't have anything else to talk about, but we had already talked so much more than probably some married <laughs> couples. Probably. And um, so that was like created a little bit of insecurity with both of us. But when we talked it out and also talked about it with community, it was yeah. key. So I think communicating with one another and being transparent and also with community, it helped me so much to check in with other people um, to not feel so alone. Cause there's times where I was like, Am I the only one that's experiencing this thing? But there's always somebody else that's out there. That's just what the enemy wants you to believe. You're the only one. But um, so communication with each other and communication with community. That's good. Brandon, would you add any other uh, tip? I'll just reiterate real quick. Um, the texting thing, I just would eliminate texting. I would um, call them yeah, so they can hear the inflection in your voice, FaceTime them. When you do get in person, do group hangouts as well. One time I went to visit Phoenix and she's like, oh, we're going to go over to my pastor's house and, and we're going to have a cookout. (laughs) And as we're driving over there, I'm thinking to myself, all right, who's going to be over there? And she told me, and I'm like, I totally know what's about to happen. I'm about to go get grilled. And we had a nice little dinner and then we all sat on the couch and they grilled me for like an hour and a half. And I actually was nervous at first, but then I realized I liked it because I'm like, man, how how many people does Phoenix have in her life that love her yeah. and care about yeah. her and are protective of her? And it wasn't just her dad that showed me his muscles and told me I was going to kill kill you if you do anything <laughs> wrong. But like so many people were in her corner. And so yeah. if you are dating long distance, get to know the people that are important to each other and spend time in groups as well. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. I think you've said this twice, but I think it's a good tip in general of, I love how you said you you both, and Phoenix, I know it's more on your side, Brandon, you probably had some, but had people that you could talk to that, that you also knew could ask questions. Phoenix, you were saying that you were that for your friend. And so I think for everybody listening, all of us probably have um, a friend who is still single or just whatever it is. If you don't have friends like that, find yourself some friends that are willing to be like, hey, I'm going to have to know some information about this guy or I'm going to have to know some information about this girl. You need to answer some questions. It just help hold you accountable and mm-hmm. not even accountable, just somebody else watching out for you to be like, mm-hmm. hey, are you really sure? Like that person seems a little, what, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Or to just be an encouragement and be like, hey, no, I actually think they're great. Why don't you talk about this more or whatever? But so find you all some friends that can do that. If you don't have any, I don't know, go Google search some friends that can help you. But okay. So long distance dating, how long did that last? What was the total? Uh, We dated long distance for about a year. Okay. But like I said, we, we, we did a lot of trips and so she came here a lot. I went out there a lot and um, yeah, so a whole year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to fast forward us a little bit. So Brandon, I'm going to ask you about this because you did a good job with this. So just kudos to you. (laughs) I want you to tell a little bit about the proposal story and then we'll ask (laughs) Phoenix her side too. So I've asked everybody who's been on, (laughs) you need a proposal story. (laughs) So it took about a year for me to be 100% positive. I mean, I knew I admired so much about Phoenix and loved her, but I was just like wanting to be sure, you know? Yeah overanalyzing everything. And so, but once I did know for sure that I wanted to marry her and that was God's plan, I was like, why waste any more time? I'm getting didn't old. skip a beat. And, so, <laughs> and this long distance thing is kind of annoying. So, yeah. um, but I did want to do an awesome proposal. So I think I saw your Pinterest board or I talked to one of your friends, but I, I found out her dream was to get proposed to in a hot air balloon. Okay. But she also wanted to be surprised. So I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> so wait, had you guys talked about marriage at all at this point? Like, I mean, we had just had a conversation the trip before. Okay. Saying like, we're both oh, there yeah. feeling like in our minds okay. and stuff. So he literally did not skip a beat the next okay. trip. <laughs> so, so I'm like, how am I going to propose in a hot air balloon and surprise her? So <laughs> I came up with this idea. It was for Val. It was a Valentine's date. I think I went oh. out to California and, um, so I made two sheets uh, like that she could pick the date because I wanted her to think she was picking okay. the future because okay. that's how I was going to surprise her. So <laughs> I, I made this whole like itinerary that we would go to the San Diego Zoo. And so I said, here's the address. Here's where we can eat breakfast. Here's like how much time we would need. I said, this is option one. I said, this is option two is to go in a hot air balloon. And um I said, these are all the the things. I said, we should probably just go to the zoo, right? And she's like, no, let's do the hot air balloon. And so she um, 
Pick the, am I telling the story right? She picked the hot, you picked the hot air balloon. I actually was going to pick the zoo because it was cheaper, but then it would have made us cancel on some friends we already had committed to. I was say, that's yeah, right. So that's I didn't want to. Yeah, that's the zoo. that's yeah. how I knew she was going to pick the hot air balloon. Okay. Because I'm like, if we do the hot air balloon, we'll be done by noon. If we do the zoo, it's going to be like until six. And I knew that she had plans at six and she wouldn't want to cancel on her friends. So I knew that's how she's going to, that's right. That's right. So, so we got up real early, like five, 6 AM. I woke her up. We're at her grandparents' house and we're like, I got, I was like, we got to go. It's time to go. And she got all ready. And then you pick the hot air balloon and then we zoom off to go to the hot air balloon. And and I'm so nervous this morning, that morning that I look down in the time we're like running way late. So I'm like trying to fly to this hot air balloon because I have it all planned out. I'm going to propose. Um, I've got these little index cards made that I'm going to secretly pass out to the other people in the hot air balloon to like record and, and take pictures of the proposal. And so we get, we almost miss the hot air balloon ride and my whole plan would have been squandered, but we (laughs) barely made it. And so we load up on the hot air balloon. I'm secretly passing out these index cards to people like, keep it a secret. I'm going to propose. And so, um, we're up there in the balloon and it's like amazing. And it just rained a bunch in California. So it was so green and so beautiful. You could see the mountains, you could see the ocean. It was in Temecula, California. And so nervous. I get, I say, all right, everybody, I've got an announcement. (laughs) And I get on my knee and I propose and it was a beautiful moment. And I forget what I said. I think I forgot. I wrote down all these notes and I just, but I did say, I love you. And I did (laughs) ask you if you'd spend the rest of your life with me. And then do you want me to tell the, the, the funny part? I do do want you to tell the funny part. (laughs) Phoenix is like, shut up. Don't tell this part. Well, I love hearing Brandon and Phoenix share so much of their story. We had such a great conversation that we've decided with this episode, we're going to make it a two-part or two. So we want to make sure you don't miss a single part. So make sure to join us next Wednesday for part two as we get to hear the back half of Brandon and Phoenix story. And since I've already heard what they're going to talk about, trust me, you don't want to miss it. We share some really fun, practical things as they share a little bit of kind of some of the fun stuff that happens in their relationship that has to do a little bit with print practical jokes, and maybe some themed date ideas. So make sure you join us next week for part two of our conversation with Brandon Phoenix. As always, we're so grateful that you're here. We really appreciate you taking a moment to go rate and review this podcast wherever you're listening. Or more importantly, if you were encouraged by something you heard today, would you take a moment and just share this episode with a friend? It means so much to us and just helps us be able to continue to share incredible stories and conversations. We hope you have a great week and go share a little something good with someone around you.